welcome back for another Torah Tuesday. Today I want to talk to you about brick making. I've been learning how the Israelites made bricks in ancient Egypt and we're going to be in Exodus chapter 5 to see a cool connection that I found. So um, bricks were made from mud. They were usually made by slaves and it was a long process. They would take the clay mixed with sand from the banks of the river and they would have to like tromp around on it for several days mixing in little bits of straw like stubble left over from the fields after harvest. The straw was necessary to absorb the moisture in the bricks as they dried. If you didn't have straw the brick would just crumble so they had to have straw to make bricks. And in Exodus chapter 5, after Moses and Aaron ask Pharaoh to let the people go so they can worship Yahweh in the wilderness, Pharaoh says no, and then he decides to crack down even harder to make life even more miserable so that the people won't have time or energy to entertain the visions that Moses and Aaron are painting of what their future could be like. And so he tells them he's not going to supply any more straw, they have to gather it for themselves. Now this is essentially dooming them because they have a daily quota they're supposed to meet. And that daily quota requires the use of straw, but you can only gather straw after the harvest. You can't gather it year round. You'd have to wait until the fields have been harvested. So whatever storage supplies used to be available to them are no longer available. So it's going to be quite a scramble to find what they need to meet their quotas so that they're not beaten. So this just highlights again how oppressive their situation really is. And when they go and complain to him and say, this is not fair, you, you aren't giving us the supplies we need and then beating us for not getting our job done, Pharaoh protects the status quo by attacking the character of the Israelites, calling them lazy. He says in verse chapter 5, verse 17, lazy, that's what you are, lazy. That is why you keep saying, let us go and sacrifice to Yahweh. So he's shifting attention away from his own oppressive exploitation of the Israelites by imagining character flaws in them that don't exist. And it's into this situation that Yahweh comes and rescues the people. And there's a really cool connection here in chapter 5 with how Yahweh provides for them later. So he tells, Pharaoh tells them in verse 18, now get to work. You will not be given any straw, yet you must produce your full quota of bricks. In Hebrew, the phrase is devar yom bayom, which is uh, the, the stuff for each day, the daily stuff. You have to, you have a quota that you have to meet. And we know from other ancient texts that this is normal for brick makers to be given a quota that they have to meet. So you have to do your debar yom bayom, your, your stuff for each day. You got to keep doing it, even though I'm not giving you straw. We see that phrase come up again in Exodus chapter 16, verse four. The Israelites have now been brought out of Egypt. They are hungry and God gives them manna and he tells them, I will rain down, this is chapter 16 verse 4, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather davar yom bayom, enough for, for, the, for that day. They're to go out and get the stuff for each day. So think of the contrast as they hear these words. Pharaoh says, you've got to keep making me stuff for each day. You're supplying my needs, my daily needs, by doing your hard labor. And here God is saying, I'm supplying your needs each day. All you have to go do is go out and gather it. Now, in, in both cases, they're going out to gather, right? But in one, they're gathering straw for bricks that are going to build some project for Pharaoh, likely to prop up his funerary cult and, and prop up his self-image. Here, they're going out to gather by Yahweh's provision, food enough to survive in the wilderness, that they didn't have to grow, they didn't have to process it. It's just an amazing contrast, a beautiful contrast. They've gone from servitude under Pharaoh to service to Yahweh, and it's just a beautiful, beautiful thing. A another connection between these two passages is Pharaoh tells them in, in chapter 5, verse 18, go work. Uh, and the word he uses is avad, go and avad, go get the job done. 
And then later when they are getting ready to leave Egypt, when Pharaoh's finally exasperated enough and tells them to leave, he tells them, go serve, using the same phrase, go work, go serve Yahweh. He is finally going to allow them to go into the wilderness to worship Yahweh. And he uses the same phrase. So at first it's go work, uh, go serve me, essentially. And then it's go serve Yahweh. He's finally releasing them. And indeed, that's what they do. They're serving Yahweh. But we can see that Yahweh is such a different kind of leader. He's not a taskmaster the way Pharaoh was. He leads them beside still waters. He supplies everything they need. And that is just such a beautiful picture of who our God is. So I hope you enjoyed that. There's more to come. Exodus is just bursting with so much inspiration. And it's reminding me every day why Sinai still matters. 